Now let's take a look at how we can use multiple LEDs to create a bar graph to give us some visual feedback on any kind of analog sensor. Today we'll actually use a potentiometer to control that bar graph, but you could use almost any sensor that gives you an analog voltage output. So let's go ahead and hook this up. It's gonna take a little while because I've got a lot of them. Now that being said, you could also use something like this, which is a really nice package here. It has a bunch of built-in LEDs into one component. It is breadboard friendly. I can actually demo this really quick. If I bend a few of these leads over and take a coin cell battery, this 2032, and put it in here, you can see I can make that connection. So it's just a bunch of rectangular shaped LEDs in this plastic enclo enclosure. They are quite affordable, really nice small package, but I'm gonna go old school and just wire up 10 LEDs and go from there. So let's get started. Keep in mind, this does not have built-in resistors, so you'll need them. You'll see in my version, I'm going to use the resistors on each LED individually. You also have to do that with this, with this component. So let's get started. I have my 220 ohm resistors. I have all my LEDs and I've got a breadboard. I'm going to use the odd number rows here for the positives. That'll help me keep track of it. So if I put the positive pin into one, the negative goes into two, and I can just follow suit all the way down the breadboard. Nice thing with these five millimeter LEDs is you can just plug them in right next to each other. They fit perfectly. Hopefully I have all my positive and negatives lined up. If they don't, we'll know real quick when one of them doesn't light up. It's two, four, six, eight, nine, and this is the tenth one right there. There are all my LEDs. Now to make this kind of compact and easy, I'll use the resistors, the 220 ohm resistors, instead of wires for connecting the grounds. So if you remember, all the odds are positive, so my grounds would be two to ground, and then follow suit all the way down with all the evens. four to ground, and it's gonna get pretty pretty messy on here. But we're just prototyping, so it doesn't really matter. Pull off a bunch more of these. And eight to ground. And move that one up a little bit. 10 to ground. I could trim the leads of these a little bit shorter, but in reality, you're just trying to prototype something. I'm gonna reuse these resistors. 14. This is 16. I think I have to go all the way to 20. Eighteen and twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hopefully, those are all in the right spot. If not, we'll know real quick when something doesn't light up. So those are all my resistors. So I have my resistors going to ground, and all the positive leads are going to the pins on the Arduino. Now, which pins do we need? Let's look at that Arduino sample code to determine that. While we're at it, let's go ahead and connect our potentiometer. You can see I have three leads here. You have the two external ones. One's gonna to go to ground, one's gonna to go to five volt, and then the sweeper is going to be connected to an analog read pin. So I'll go ahead and put that down in this area to stay out of the way. And yes, I'm gonna need lots of jumper wires for this one. So I might as well pick a couple of long ones for now and hook up my potentiometer. Cause I know at the very least, this should go to five volt. I should have the sweeper, the middle pin, connected to an analog. I don't know which one yet. And let's get a nice long blue one, if I have one, or black. I don't, so I'm just gonna use a yellow one again. It doesn't really matter. And make sure that's in the right spot. Yep, and that will get connected to ground right there. So let's go take a look at the code. And if we go to the Arduino website, I have it all loaded up right here. I can do LED 
bar graph and let's see what comes up. Right there, LED bar graph. And sure enough, they're showing the little component I showed earlier, this little nice package one. But they have a nice picture here of all the LEDs and how to wire them up. So you'll notice all of the LEDs go to ground and then you can run that ground wire over, which I might as well do that now, which just means I'm gonna take ground over here and pick a ground pin on the Arduino. I'll pull that one right there. Now all my grounds are connected. And then if you look here, that first LED is connected to, looks like pin two. I can verify that in the code below. I can also look at the schematic here. Let's go ahead and look at the code. And you can see the LED pins and the way they define the integer of the LED pins is by using an array, a really clever way of saving a lot of code. You don't have to do integer LED pin one, LED pin two, three, four, five. So in this case, they actually write a little quick array and it tells you it's pins two through 11. So let me copy this code. If you click on get code, it'll open up a blank window. You can select all, copy it, close that out, open up my Arduino. create a new sketch, paste it in there. I'm going to also have to save it. I call that LED bar graph, save that. And I like to just look at the code while it's in Arduino. It's nice because it gives nice formatting of colors and everything. So we have oh, right there, analog pin zero, typical Arduino code, all their example codes seem to use analog zero, it's very handy. I should have known that. And now my potentiometer is hooked up. I've, I have a constant integer of the LED count. That's the number of LEDs on the bar graph. And that helps it read the array later on. And then in the loop, we are going to read that sensor, the analog read, and use this great function here. I love this. So it's, it's using the map feature. And what map does is it takes the analog reading, in this case, between 0 and 1023. It's 1024 steps, but we count 0, so it's 0 to 1023. And it maps that to however many LEDs we have, which are 10. So 0 equals 0, 1023 would equal 10, and everything in between is proportionally mapped. It's very handy, very cool feature. I like using it in a lot of different projects when I'm trying to transfer data from one reading to a different kind of output. And in here, they're using it for the LEDs. And then it's a for loop. You're reading it and you're mapping those thresholds and turning on LEDs based on whether the threshold is met for lighting up that LED. Fairly simple code here. So let's go ahead and wire up the rest of those LEDs. So we know that the first one, and I'm gonna need a lot of wires here, and I'm gonna give up on making nice colors because I just don't have that many. I'm gonna do the first LED to two, and then I'll do pin three two, row three, and then pin or row five right here is going to go into four. I'll just keep adding these. Let's see, we got seven going over here. Then the next odd would be nine. So you remember all those odd numbers are the positive lines of the LED. Um, got 11 Move over to here. Let's get 13. It's getting crowded. And 15 over to the pin right there. And let's see, we can do it this way. Pin 10 going to end up going into row 17 for me, and then row 19 should be pin 11, which by looking at my code, it is 2 through 11, so fingers crossed that worked. It's a lot of wires to get in there. Should be okay. Now I can go ahead and upload the code to my Arduino by plugging it in. Once I plug it in, I'll have to make sure that the Uno is selected and the proper port, which it is, and let's go ahead and upload it. And we can look right here, they're blinking away. It's uploaded, it says done uploading. Oh, look at that, it works. So if I have my potentiometer all the way at zero and I turn it, it starts going up, 
and all the way back down. Very bright, very interesting. Now think about if you had an ultrasonic sensor or a motion sensor, you could keep track and count. It doesn't necessarily have to be how much voltage. You could also keep track of how many times it heard something, how many times it saw something. Really, really easy to implement. It's basically turning LEDs on and off based on the sensor reading. Now that being said, there are quite a few wires here, quite a few resistors. Surely there must be a better way to do this. And in fact, there is. Some companies, this one's by Adafruit, put out bar graph with breakout boards. This is considered a backpack. Very often you'll see them on LCD screens. In this case, it's on a 24 segment LED bar graph. There's actually two of these little LED packages in here. This is a 10, this is 12, so 12 and 12 is 24. And this uses I squared C. And all you need is a power and ground and then the two data pins, data in and out, and you can control this. So now you've gone from all of these pins and all these resistors and everything else that's in there down to four pins, making your life much easier. So if you're going to implement one or many of these in your project, you are more than likely going to want to offload some of the electronics on a backpack like this one.